Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to be able to show you how to fill out the second round of the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by SmartBiz to hopefully make things a little bit easier. In this particular demonstration, we're actually going to be acting as if we were a non-employer business, meaning something like a sole proprietor or an independent contractor. These are individuals who employ themselves. Hopefully this makes things a little bit easier so you try to fill out the application on your own. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to enter in our first name last name, business name. In our particular case, where we're acting as an independent contractor, our business name is going to be our legal name. Email, phone number, type of business, again, selecting, selecting from this drop-down which one is going to be the best for you, and then your requested loan amount. If you're not sure what your requested loan amount is, please go ahead and hold your mouse directly over that little question mark, and what it says is it'll be your average monthly payroll times 2.5. You take that number, it's a rough estimate, you put it directly into this application right here. After that it says, I have reviewed, understand, and agreed to the Smart Biz Terms of Service Privacy Policy and Consent to Electronic Communications, and the person agreeing here possesses the authority to bind the business to these agreements. After you fill out all of that information, we're going to click Continue to Pre-Qualify. It takes a couple of seconds, and it'll take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it says, Hi, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to understand your financing needs, get to know your business, and help you apply for your loan. Let's go ahead and get started. First, it's going to uh, say, did, you, did your business get a Paycheck Protection Program PPP loan last year? In our particular case, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to click yes, we did receive a Paycheck Protection Program loan last year. What was the amount from the previous loan? You're going to enter that in directly from your tax forms from last year. Now that you've entered in the amount from the previous loan, you're going to press save and continue. Then it's going to ask you a couple of questions. When did your business get started? You're going to pick a range. Less than two years ago, two to five years ago, six to ten years ago, or more than ten years ago. In our particular case, we're going to go ahead and click six to ten years ago and press save and continue. Next, it's going to ask what is your business industry. You're going to slip, uh, you're going to click the drop down and you're going to select the one that makes the most sense for you and your particular business. In mine, we're going to scroll down just a little bit right here to figure out what's going to be available and we're going to click professional services and click save and continue. After that, it's going to ask where's your business located. You're going to enter in your business address. Now, the cool thing with this is you can actually select it just from this drop down. As soon as you select it from the drop down, it actually automatically moves the bar of progress up above and it makes it so that this bar turns blue so that you're able to move forward. We're going to go ahead and click save and continue. Next, it's going to ask how many employees do you have? In our particular case, where we're an independent contractor, it's just me. So we're going to click no employees, just me and press save and continue. After that, it says, great, let's save your progress. Please create a password. Please make sure this is something that you're going to remember for the rest of all time so that you can access this in case you do have additional questions, comments, or concerns later down the line. Next, press save and continue. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks like mine that says, thanks, we're helping small businesses like yours get back on track with the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Next, we're going to ask a couple of questions about business owners. We're going to press save and continue. Next, it's going to ask, who owns 20% or more of your particular company? Remember, we put it as my name because we're an independent contractor. In our case, it's just us, so we're going to click person. Give it a couple of seconds, and it changes the form to this. It's going to ask for your first name, last name, percentage of ownership, home address, again, just like last time. You're going to go ahead and enter it into the best of your ability and select it from the drop-down. And then it's going to ask for your date of birth and social security number. After you've gone ahead and you've gone past the uh, save owner information, you're going to scroll down a little bit and it's going to show you a screen that looks just like mine, where it asks you to certify some information, including that you've entered all of the information this far that is accurate and that you are the principal owner of your particular business, that you're authorized to act on behalf of the business, and that you grant permission from SmartBiz, SmartBiz lenders, and lenders who partner with SmartBiz to procure and review their particular credit report. This is not going to impact the applicant's credit score and not show up as an inquiry. So you're going to go ahead and click right here where it says I certify, and then you're going to click see what you pre-qualify for. Excellent. After you go ahead and click that, it's going to say this should only take a minute. They're analyzing your business and personal credit. After that, they say thank you. You're pre-qualified for the loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. You're going to go ahead and press continue. 
Next, it's going to take you into your financial information, where it's going to show you a couple of pieces of information. It says financials, calculate your loan amount. Let's press continue. In order to calculate your loan amount, let's determine your average monthly payroll first. To do this, complete the following steps. We're going to ask for more information about your business. Next, you'll select which one of the listed documents that we're going to use to calculate your loan. And then once you've entered in all that information, we'll automatically calculate your loan for you. Then press begin. Now it's going to ask for some business information. First, what is your business entity type? In my particular case, we're going to go with sole proprietorship. How many W-2 employees does your business have? In my particular case, that's going to be zero. Because we do not have employees and we do not pay ourselves a W-2 wage as a business owner. Next, what industry are you in or what is your business industry in? If you're not sure what your business industry is, go ahead and click what is a NAICS code or are you a gig worker? Go ahead and go right here. Go ahead and enter this into the best of your ability. Scroll down and actually find your NAICS code in the list. Mine is right here, 541613 Marketing Consulting Services. And that says what month and year did you get this business started? Enter in this information to the best of your ability and then press continue. Now it's going to ask for a document type. You can either choose to use a CARE Act report or a tax document. In my case, we're going to use a tax document and press continue. Now, it says we'll calculate your loan amount based on the tax document that you used below. In our particular case, we're going to go with the only option here, a 1040 Schedule C, and press continue. Now, it's going to have us pick up a couple more pieces of information. First, choose the year of the tax forms that you're going to use. In my case, we're going to go with 2019. Next, find your IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. If you're an independent contractor like a gig worker, you must refer to your 1040 Schedule C if you haven't filed or completed your form. We'll help you complete it. Show me how to complete my 1040 Schedule C if necessary. In our case, where it says enter line number 7, enter the number from line 7 titled Gross Income, enter that into this box here. From there, it says your calculated loan amount. It says average monthly payroll. This is step 2 divided by 12. Shows you your PPP loan amount. This is the amount of, from your average monthly payroll, this number, times by 2.5, rounded up to the nearest dollar. Then it says, please share any explanation about the information provided to you that you think would be helpful to us when reviewing your application. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and hit NA, but if you do have something important to let them know, this is the place to do it. Then press continue. Now it says your loan amount will be adjusted from X amount to X amount. This adjustment is based on the information you provided, which determines your PPP loan amount. Would you like to proceed with the newest amount? Go ahead and press confirm. They're just trying to help you get the most information out of here. Then it's going to have you upload your tax documents. So it's going to ask for your IRS Form 1040 Schedule C. If you're not sure what this particular form looks like, you can click show me what this form looks like. If you do know what that is, go ahead and click right here. Find that on your computer itself and press upload. Just remember, this does have to be your 1040 Schedule C. Please do not upload a 1099. If you do have questions, please contact us at the chat right here in the bottom of the screen. Once we verified we've entered in the correct information, press continue. Then it says thank you for providing your financial information. Either complete your business info or upload supporting documents. In my case, we're gonna press continue application. Once you get here, it's gonna take you to a page that looks like mine. I know that this page looks a little bit confusing. That's totally okay. What this is, is there are two different sections. One for the business information and one for your business, uh, your, your information as the business owner. We're going to go ahead, go up to the very top and click continue. After that, it's going to ask you for some basic information. If you have a DBA doing business as name, if you have a business phone number, does the business engage in or is the business a barred category? If you need to explain this, all you have to do is click explain this and go ahead and move forward. In my case, we're going to click no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency or presently involved in any bankruptcy? In my case, we're going to click no. Has the applicant received an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, idle loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? Again, in my case, we're going to click no. Is the applicant of an individual or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of an applicant subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? In my case, no. Within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, 
bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application or in an application for federal financial assistance or within the last year for any felony, has the applicant of an individual or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nulla contendere, or commenced any form of parole or probation? In my case, we're going to click no. After that, did this business experience a decrease in gross revenue of 25% or more when comparing one quarter of 2020 to the same quarter in 2019? In my case, we're going to go ahead and click yes. This is one of the qualifications in order to get the PPP on the second wave. In my case, we're going to click the quarter in which you saw the business experience as drop in revenue. I'm going to click Q3 and plus press uh, continue. After that, it's going to ask you for your business story, where it asks you to, to describe the history of your business, what types of products and services that you provide, etc. So let's go ahead and enter that in here, where we're a local commerce platform. Once you've entered that in, you're going to press continue to step three. After that, it's going to ask you for the purpose of the loan. What it's going to do is you're going to scroll down just a tiny bit and you're going to pick anything and everything for how the funds of this application are going to be used. You can absolutely select more than one option. So you can look at employee salaries, renter interest, mortgage, utilities, operations expenditures, property damage costs, worker protection expenditures, etc. Click anything and everything that you're planning on using this PPP application for. In my case, we're going to click employee salaries and press continue. After that, it shows you that first page that we were on just a couple of seconds ago. And now we're going to press the next continue button. It's going to ask you about you, where it's going to say basic information. So you're going to enter in your phone number, your email address, your experience. So this could be your job title if you're an ex executive director or authorized representative. And not including the business applying for this loan, do you own 50% or more in another business? Yes or no? In my case, no. We're going to press continue to step two. After that, it's going to ask you for some basic demographic information. For instance, what is your ethnicity? Are you a veteran? Which race are you? And then what is your gender? Go ahead and make sure that you fill this out to the best of your ability and press continue. After that, we're going to say thanks. Uh, thanks for telling us about your business. Next, we need a few final details regarding your loan. From here, we're going to go ahead and click this bright blue box that says go to closing. This is going to take us to a page that looks just like mine, where it says wrap up the final details for your loan. It says closing, and just like we have seen up to this point in time, you can see the name of the business, that's the business portal, and the name of the owner, the owner portal below. We're going to go ahead and click continue. Then it's going to ask us for the business closing details. So first, what is the mailing address? In our case, please go ahead and select the address that that is shown. If it is different, go ahead and click out there. Next, which best describes the taxpayer identification number for this particular business? Where we're functioning as an independent contractor, we do not have an employer identification number. We're going to be using our social security number. And as always, any and all information I show you guys in these kinds of videos is 100% falsified. The entire purpose is to be able to create as close to an experience for you as possible. So we went ahead and entered in our social. Next, it has some SBA required questions. First, are the products and or services of the business available to the general public? Go ahead and click yes or no. How many jobs will be created as a result of this loan? Go ahead and enter that number right there. How many jobs will be retained as a result of this loan that would have been lost otherwise? Go ahead and enter in that number as well. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA? Click yes or no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees of the applicant included in the applicant's payroll calculations? In my case, yes. Is the principal of the business or the business applicant a customer of one of the following banks? Please read this carefully. If you are a customer of one of these banks, please select that from this little drop down right here. In my case, I'm going to click none. After that, it's going to ask us for our business checking details. This is where your loan is going to be deposited if slash when you are. This is going to be where the money is transferred after the loan is or is not approved. So let's go ahead and enter in our bank name, our routing number and our account number. After you filled all of this information out to the best of your ability, click save and continue. 
And I'll take you to a page that looks like this, where again, we're back on the wrap up the final details of your loan. We finished the questions for the business. Now let's answer the questions about us. It's going to ask for personal information. Now, it's going to ask either for your proof of identification in the form of a driver's license or your passport. You need to pick one or the other. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go with my driver's license. So you're going to find the state. You're going to enter in the driver's license number. And then you're going to enter in the expiration. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine where it says, you're almost done. We just need your authorization. By checking this box, go ahead and check this box, the, bo uh, the borrower or authorized representative certifies all of the following, including but not limited to, that the applicant was in operation on February 15th of 2020, has not permanently closed, and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, or sole proprietorship with no employees, or had in place for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. The applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. The president, vice president, head of an executive department, or member of Congress, or the spouse of such person as determined under applicable common law, does not directly or indirectly hold a controlling interest in the applicant. You further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documents and all forms is true and accurate in all material respects. You understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable under the law, and you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using the required documents submitted. After you've read through all of this, we're going to click Save and Continue. It takes a couple of seconds, and it will ask us to be able to provide some supporting documents. What we're going to do is click this bright blue continue box, and it's going to have us verify a little bit. First, it has us verify our 2019 tax documents. This is where we uploaded our 1040 Schedule C. Just as a reminder, they cannot and will not accept a 1099 in this particular box. That is not the correct type of documentation that we're looking for here. It has to be a 1040 Schedule C or Schedule F. After you've verified that this is in fact the correct document right here, and if not, clicking right here where it says upload another document and selecting it from your computer, then it's going to ask for business funding. So it'll upload, it's going to ask you to upload one of the following, which is ever easiest for you to provide. A 2020 invoice, bank statement, or book of record to demonstrate your business was in fact in operation on February 15th of 2020. I'm going to click right here. We're going to go to my bank statements, and here's my bank statement from February of 2020. I'm going to go ahead and upload. Give a couple seconds. Excellent. Next, it's going to have you, again, confirm the business was in operation in 2019. Upload one of the follow uh, following documents to establish your business was operating in 2019. Please pick whatever is easiest for you to be able to provide. That could be a 2019 IRS Form 1099-MISC, an IRS Form 1099-K, an invoice, bank statement, or book of record establishing that you were self-employed in 2019. In my case, I'm going to go right here. We're going to find my 1099 because it is directly from 2019. We're going to go ahead and click Upload. Now, we verified that everything is in fact correct. We have our 1040 Schedule C or Schedule F up here at the top in our 2019 tax documents. We have a business funding document in the form of a bank statement in my particular case. And then we have our 1099 right here. After that, we're simply going to click Save and Continue. It'll take you to a page that looks just like this, where it says, Thanks for providing the required documents. Great job completing all your required documents this time. Your relationship manager may reach out to you if we need more supporting documents to complete your application. Next, continue with your loan application. All we're going to do is click this bright blue track my loan. At this point in time, your application is relatively complete. You can see your status over on the left-hand side. It's going to be in stages one, two, three, four, five, and it'll show you where you're sitting at in the funnel, your loan amount, the application number, and your application status. With this in mind, what's going to happen from here is you're actually going to receive a set of correspondence directly from your lender in question in case they have any questions, comments, concerns, or need any additional information from you in the future. However, if you do run into any problems, questions, comments, or concerns, you can always feel free to reach out to us directly. Thanks so much!